Welcome everybody, Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at the Knight Management Center at the Stanford Graduate School of Business, or GSB is what we all called it when I was applying. Of course, I didn't get in, I paid my tax like everybody else. <laughs> uh, but it's a beautiful day, they had a cool event here really talking about um, innovation, uh, big social issues around diversity of the workforce and our our robots going to take all of our jobs and who's going to lead in the future. So we're really excited to have a really Silicon Valley veteran, uh, Steve Szczynski, who's now the president of SR International, also teaching some classes. Steve, great to see you again. It's been a little while since we last uh, crossed paths. Jeff, good to see you. Absolutely. So let's jump into it a little bit on your panel. Um, so you're really talking about leadership and, and leadership, that's why these schools were formed back in the day. It's a really important topic of evolving space. We've talked about ageism. And what do you see from your capper seat about what's happening in the leadership as we move this economy down the train? So a lot of the talk these days is leadership and innovation. Who's going to be the leader in, in innovation uh, over the next 20, 25 years? Silicon Valley has kind of had you know, the, uh, the core of all of that, this is where the center of innovation is. We have a lot of what we call innovation tourists come from all over the world, spend a few days here, sometimes a couple of weeks here, and expect to go back to their home territories and develop a big innovation center. It doesn't right. really happen. So we spend a lot of time talking about, uh, is Silicon Valley going to continue? Um, is it going to be uh, still the center of the universe 20 years from now? Are there other areas of the world that are going to be taking the lead in this, this whole area? What we've seen, of course, is that uh, Asia Pac is really coming on strong. It's no longer, it seems like it's Europe, but it seems like it's more in the area of um, uh, Chengdu, Shenzhen, uh, Beijing, uh, Shanghai, and China, of course. Uh, we now have Japan, who used to be, who has been very, very good about uh, creating IP, but not very good on innovation and entrepreneurship, but now they're coming along. Uh, we have Singapore, who wants to be a leader in this whole area. And so um, these are, these are uh, the, 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 the newfound growth areas where venture capital is moving in. There are great universities, research centers, uh, and entrepreneurship uh, happening. And we seem to think, or at least I seem to think, that that's, uh, that's an area that, that is going to take strong leadership as time moves on. So one of the, the flip side of the coin of, of innovation is disruption. We, we were just at Ford earlier this week and, and Bill Ford talked about his time at eBay on the board and, and getting a, kind of a taste of Silicon Valley culture that, you know, Clayton Christian, I better disrupt my own business or somebody else is going to. And we also hear uh, that, that Foxconn and some of the traditional kind of low-end manufacturing in China, they're laying off people. So are you seeing the kind of disruption uh, play in these innovation centers? Because as, as he defined it, disruption is really changing the game reorganizing the, the chessboard, putting a different lens on a problem, and that's what allows something like Uber or Airbnb to completely you know, flip an industry upside down. Yeah, we are. We're, we're, uh, we're, we're also hearing the term, and using it a lot, digital Darwinism, um, as it's called. So we're seeing, uh, uh, we partner up with, uh, at SRI, um, at uh, many uh, organizations, companies, who realize that they may be the leader in their industry now, but they're very, very fearful, the C-level suite people are very fearful that that's not going to last forever. As you might know, Jeff, 52% of the Fortune 500 companies since the year 2000 are no longer part of the Fortune 500. They've either gone out of business, uh, or they've, they've lost their market share, or they've gotten acquired, or something along the lines, they've missed the product cycle in innovation. And many of the executives of the current ones, as well as large companies, don't want to have that happen to them. So they come to Stanford for executive training. They also come to SRI for uh, technical innovation ideas. Um, one area, for example, that we're spending a lot of time in is in the whole transportation area. As you know, automotive is part of that, and I'm, I'm sure you've been talking to your viewers uh, about that quite a bit. The whole construction industry is ripe for digitization for sure. Uh, areas like, uh, like uh, safety and security and so on. Uh, we see a lot of older technology and eventually we're, we're seeing, we're, we'll be seeing some new technology, biometrics and the like, coming out and changing that whole industry around. And the Darwinism just keeps happening. I mean, the most recent example being EMC swallowed up by Dell. You know, years ago, I'm sure they would never have considered Dell a, com a competitor, and it was the same thing with Ford talking about, you know, they'd never thought about Uber as a competitor. They were looking across the street at GM. So it, that that's really the danger. You're going to get taken out by someone you don't even have in your radar. Well, uh, so, so, 
uh, the, the situation for these global 2000 ilk of companies, and there's, you know, there's a lot of them, there's 2000 plus, plus, right, right. right? They're all trying to figure out, should we do an aqua hire of a young, you know, 20, 30 person organization that is maybe composed of computer scientists from Stanford or other top notch schools? Or should we, um, should we do a merger with maybe someone, a heavyweight, in that industry, you mentioned EMC and Dell. Should should we should we do a merger and maybe we end up in second place in that merger, but at least we're still alive, or should we partner up with an SRI because um, they have some some interesting um, computer scientists or uh, physical scientists or, or what have you, or should we try to do it ourselves? And more and more, um, we're finding are not able to do it themselves because the technologies have changed so rapidly they don't have their their scientists are not with it in terms of what's really happening now right and this whole concept of coopetition which I don't know if it was founded here in the valley but it's certainly very aggressive where you're competing and partnering with the same company through different departments and that's just the way that business gets done very well, different than the old day where it was me versus you in a zero-sum game well I think that's been a hallmark of Silicon Valley for actually quite a while we talked about it in, in actually a number of our panels today around the openness that Silicon Valley has had among startup companies and you know you're a startup executive I'm a startup executive maybe in in the same or similar industries so you and I have coffee together we're sharing information we're guarded but we're still sharing information you walk away with benefits I walk walk away with benefits, and both of us have minimal costs involved. Right. I think that that is starting to spread around more, where um, it used to be, as you mentioned, old line industries were very, very closed mouthed about what they're doing, and now people are sharing more about things. Right, so give us a quick update on SRI. You know, it's been around for a long time, it's kind of mysterious over, over uh, over off middle field, a lot of research, a lot of, of hardcore technology. So for people that aren't familiar with SRI or kind of what you're doing today, what are some of the things you can share? Sure, a little snippet about SRI. We're celebrating 70 years in business uh, this year. We were founded in 1946 by Stanford University as a Stanford Research Institute. Changed our name in 1970 and became an independent, not-for-profit organization. We're now almost 2,000 people strong, 20 locations across the U.S. and internationally. We do about $500 million a year in contracted research, including our subsidiaries. Um, what we're known for is, of course, our innovations. We're the first, uh, first connection to the internet. Uh, the, the folks, Doug Engelbart and others, uh, invented the, uh, the computer mouse. We actually helped Walt Disney out with his selection of Disneyland in Anaheim. So people think we do everything from the computer mouse to Mickey Mouse. Uh, that's a good, that's, that's a good range. I don't know whether that's a good joke <laughs> that's or a That's a good one, no, I like it. <laughs> you know, of course, we're known for Siri. Siri was spun out of uh, SRI. Every, you know, a lot of people use Siri these days as part of the iPhone, but it was spun out as an independent company, snapped up by, by Steve Jobs before he passed on. Um, Intuitive Surgical, which is the Da Vinci robotic surgical device. In fact, robots and robotic technology has been uh, something that we've been focused in on for quite some time. We spin out robotic companies um, last, uh, just in the last six, or excuse me, the last year, year and a half, there have been something like five or six robotic companies that we have spun out. One of which is sort of interesting, it's called Superflex. It is an exosuit, you've heard of exoskeletons. Right, right, right. Uh, and so we forth. watched Aliens, we, we, know the, we know the drill. <laughs> so, so exosuits are not very noticeable, they almost look like normal suits, but they've got actuators, batteries, lots of technology, software and so on, that help elderly walk around, um, that help um, kids with muscular dystrophy and other disabilities get by and be able to actually walk uh, by themselves and so on. And, and eventually our technology, this, this company will also have uh, the ability for uh, uh, high, high, uh, high stat, high caliber athletes and weekend warriors like you and me get uh, therapy even quicker. So lots of different applications. So the whole idea behind SRI is to do good for society as a not-for-profit, to make the world a better place to live in, more productive, healthier, uh, better educated, and so on. You must love your weekly updates from the uh, the team leads. I'm I'm like a kid in a candy <laughs> shop. You know, I walk into SRI, you know, nearly every day, and I can walk into any lab. I can talk to any researcher. It's every every day at SRI is a good day, and I love to do speeches on behalf of SRI, representing our our great research that's going on. Because 
Yeah, you know, we have a 200 person strong education group. We have a biosciences group, first cure for malaria. We're doing a lot of uh, 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 work on infectious diseases. So I can talk for a long, long time, much more time than you have, Jeff. <laughs> well, we'll have a follow up, but, but okay. if I let you go without talking about another institution that I know you're very proud of and also like to talk about, and my boss, Dave Valente, would be very upset with me, is Union College. I know you guys share that uh, as, as alma mater. Uh, give us a little update on Union College. It's not Stanford. It's on the other coast, so if you're not really a West Coast guy, you want to go East Coast. Uh, no, that's no the place Stanford. to go. That's the Union place is go. the place to go. So, so. we're we're uh, we're uh, we're a strong uh, 2200 typical college back east. Lots of you know Williams, Amherst, Trinity, uh, Vassar. These kinds of, of of colleges are back there. Typically between 1500 and 2200 students. We're uh, Division Three in every sport except for hockey. Hockey is big back east, and and uh, we're Division One hockey. And a couple of years back, we actually won the Division One, beating Boston College and the University of Minnesota collectively. Who had something like 11 D1 crowns over the years. Collectively, they had something like 100,000 students. We have 2,200 students. We beat them in one weekend and won the Division One. The Frozen Four. But, but, but we're much more than athletics. My president would be very upset with me. <laughs> uh, we just got listed as one of the Hidden Ivies. Uh, we're a very talented uh, uh, group of uh, uh, engineering, about 15%, and liberal arts, about uh, 85%. So thanks very much, Jeff, for asking me oh, about, absolutely. about and, unions. It's one of my the, favorite topics to talk about. And let's have a, we'll have a follow-up at SRI. I'd love to come over, bring the crew, you know, peek in on some of those projects. Plan like for a long time. Too. Plan for a long we'll time. We'll be there There's for a all lot, weekend. Lot, <laughs> lot to talk about. All there. right. <laughs> Steve Szynski, thanks for stopping by, and uh, and really appreciate catching up. Jeff, thank, thank you very absolutely. much. Absolutely. Okay. I'm Jeff Rick. He's Steve Szynski. We're at the Stanford Graduate School of Business. You're watching theCUBE. Catch you next time. Thanks for watching.